I now hand the conference over to Mr. Naveen Agrawal, Head Institutional Equities at SKP Securities Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you on behalf of AKP oh, Limited and SKP Securities to this financial results conference call with the leadership team at HEG Limited. We have with us Mr. Manish Kulati, Executive Director, Mr. Om Prakash Ajmera, Group CFO, and Mr. Gulshan Sakuja, CFO. We'll have the opening remarks from Mr. Gulati, followed by a Q&A session. Over to you, Mr. Gulati. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, friends, good afternoon uh, and welcome to our Q2 financial results call for the year 21-22. As you can see, this quarter's profits were higher than the previous quarters and among the best in the industry. Thanks to strong global steel demand, world's crude steel output increased by 7.9% in the first nine months of this calendar year, including China. While steel production in the rest of the world, excluding China, increased by 15.5%. If we compare China's seed production of quarter two with quarter one, there has been a steep decline in seed production from 292 million metric tons level to 244, which is 49 million metric tons lower. This is due to their drive to lower carbon emission levels. And moreover, from November, they will be having winter cuts where they're supposed to be cutting 30% of their production. This will result in reduced Chinese steel exports, enabling the rest of the world to make more steel. As you know, 47 to 48% of which is from the electric arc furnace route, where graphite electrodes are used. In fact, if you look at the monthly production of China, the September was probably the lowest monthly production in 33 years, and October registered even 9% lower than uh, September. So coming to our country, Indian crude steel production increased by 23.3% for the nine months and to September this year compared to the previous year. Despite the second wave of COVID-19, Indian steel industry performed exceptionally well in the last two, three quarters with very high capacity utilization and record margins. According to WSA's latest short-range outlook, the demand would expand by 4.5% in 2021 reaching 1.855 million metric tons, up from 0.1% growth in 2020. And further, steel demand is expected to increase by 2.2% to 1896 million metric tons in 2022. In comparison with the last quarter's results, HEG's performance this quarter was much stronger, supported by improved global demand for graphite electrodes and firming up of prices. In Q2 FY2122, electro prices improved for both USB and non-USB grades, and we expect them to keep strengthening in the following quarters. Our high-cost inventory of electrodes, as well as that the meal coke made electrodes from high quality, high cost coke, have all been liquidated. As we talk, the needle coke costs are also rising in tandem with electro prices and the scarcity of uh, needle coke due to increased demand could, could uh, keep supply tight for the foreseeable future. Our ongoing capacity expansion from 80,000 tons to 100,000 tons is in full swing and we hope to be in the market with these new products by end 2022 or early 2023. This will bring our capacity under one roof to 100,000 metric tons which is almost 40% more than the next largest plant. With our uh, four decades of experience in business, we expect to be a supplier of choice to our global and Indian customers. And with this, I would now hand over the floor to our CFO, Mr. Gutshan Sakuja, to take you through all the financial numbers, and then we'll be very happy to answer any queries that you have. Over to Gutshan. Yeah, thank you, sir. Good afternoon, friends. Uh, I will now briefly take you through the company's operating and financial performance for the quarter and a half year ended 30th September 2021. For the quarter ended September 2021, HG recorded a revenue from operation of rupees 518 crore as against 414 crore in the previous quarter and 323 crores in the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. Revenue for the quarter saw an increase of 25% on Q1Q basis, while it witnessed an increase of 60% in comparison to the corresponding quarter of the last financial year. <clears throat> the upswing in the prices have led to the encouragement in the performance of the quarter. During the quarter ended 30th September 2021, 
the company has delivered a beta including other income of 167 crore in the quarter as against 94 crore the company recorded a net profit after tax of rupees 113 crore in the quarter as against 56 crore in the previous quarter and against a loss of 34 crores in the corresponding quarter of last financial year Further, during the quarter ended 30th September 2021, the rates and the other guidelines have been notified under the remission of duties and taxes on exported products scheme, while notification dated 17th of August 2021. Accordingly, the company has accrued the benefits amounting to rupees 4.85 crores under the A4 set scheme on the eligible export sales for the period from Jan 1 to September 2021, out of which rupees 3.24 crores pertains to the eligible export sales for the period from Jan 1 to June 30th, 2021. The expansion plan that is, a, that is a increasing the capacity from 80K to 100K is going on a full swing. There was a few months delay due to COVID and we expect the expansion project to be completed in the quarter October to December 2022 and we will be ready with the commercial production from early 2023. The company is a long-term debt free and having a crazy size of nearly 1500 crore as on 30th September, yielding an average return of approximately 5.5% per annum. Now we would like to address any question or queries you have in your mind. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached on phone now. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star followed by one on your touchstone phone now. We have a first question from the lineup, Pratesh Cheda from Lucky Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Sir, uh, if you could tell what is the capacity utilization in this water from the 80,000 tons? 90%. 90%, it has been for Q1 as well as similar for Q2. Okay. Uh, so, sir, I was just doing the math uh, because I was actually doing it 100% only. Uh, we are at about, let's say, $1,000 EBITDA type number. Uh, we have this fond memory of this industry uh, even recording, uh, you know, for a few quarters in excess of $5,000. Uh, you know, not now, but uh, in that golden period of uh, 18. Yeah. Uh, right. Uh, uh, I just wanted to understand the the dynamics of the industry then uh, for for recording those kinds of EBITDA. And dynamics of the industry now, and do you see upside to this thousand twelve hundred dollar EBITDA uh, which you're recording? Uh, and how has the business working changed? Because that was a phase where we gained on prices with stable needle coke. Then came a phase where we booked all the needle coke. So there was a phase of you know uh, operational losses. And now, how in, in this cycle is the business being done? So, uh, you know, if you could help us understand this uh, this part. Yeah, sure. Uh, let me distinguish uh, between those times and these times. Uh, in those times, you would recall in early 17, the preceding six years were actually quite bad for the industry, uh, with margins were under pressure, and there was excess supply in the market and less demand, due to which about six major plants had closed down in the Western world. So by the time we came to early 2017, the the demand and supply of, of graphite industry were all quite balanced. And then came a sudden shocker from the Chinese side where they put an immediate clampdown on their the polluting steel industry, the blast furnaces, etc. And their steel exports to the rest of the world declined from a level of 120 and within two years they were at a level of 60 million metric tons. So that's a huge number. And just to, just to uh, emphasize what that number is, Indian total steel production is 112. So suddenly, a 60 million metric tons going out of the market actually uh, made the rest of the world make more steel. And rest of the world makes 38% of the steel through the electric arc on its route. So there was a sudden spurt in the demand of graphite electrodes. That came so sudden that the graphite industry was not ready to cope up with that. 
so by the time the, the i mean everybody turned out uh, uh, extra production in, incrementally by the time the market was on fire see for a for a steel company electrodes are just three percent of the cost so nobody wants to take a risk of uh, you know losing out on their steel production just for uh, 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 electrodes uh, uh. so everybody tried to in the later months everybody tried to stock up more than what they needed which is and and you know a company let's say in middle east a company who was happy uh, with working with two months of physical stock of graphite electrodes at their plant just because that reason doesn't have any electro plant suddenly wanted to keep six months so and everybody stocked more and more and more so there was a psychosis in the market and the prices shot up like anything from a level of um, let's say 2500 dollars to a level of 15000 dollars happened in a matter of just two three quarters and everybody overbought so there was a period of correction which followed later and then by the time before the inventory got over the covid thing struck so the inventory took a little more time to liquidate so there was so much of excess material in the supply chain that it took a while almost year and a half or two years for that to correct and that is what we saw in our results also that we had like mean, two bad years or there were six bad quarters trying to you know live with those high cost inventories revaluing them now the times are quite different than before now the times are such that we are getting a real demand uh, from the world after all these corrections after the there is no excess in inventories of electrodes either with customers or with manufacturers now it's a more stable regime that we are actually catering to the real demand coming in the world whatever 2 3% uh, uh, electric arc furnace is going also in the past two three years the 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 clamp down on carbon emissions is increasing more and more and china still continues to be very serious about it i mean the, as i as i said in my opening remarks the september monthly production of china is the lowest in 33 years so now this is this is like making history because the truly clamping down on the production what will uh, what will be the benefit of this for the other rest of the world is that the steel gets consumed domestically so they won't have uh, steel to export in fact they are discouraging export by taking out the vat and even thinking of putting um, export duty on some of the grades of steel they export so that goes well for the rest of the world because the rest of the world can make more uh, steel through electric arc furnace also in china they still continue to give emphasis on more and more electric arc furnace steel production which is right now at a level of uh, let's say 12% and we expect in 2 3 years 3 4 years maybe it has to go to a level of 20% and any of the scrap generation in china is also increasing so these times are different than those times because those came a bit too sudden this industry you know got this is more stable now what this is a much better scenario than that all the graphite companies like ours they are all working all have almost reached the level of 90% capacity utilizations so this is more stable than before and prices are firming up quarter by quarter that's how i uh, look at it okay uh, but as the industry of electro supply now kept up with the pace of uh, supply or additional capacity or uh, there is no additional capacity so again okay. okay. in, in in the western world see, right now as, as i just said that we uh, I, i think all of the steel in the uh, graphite industry is already at a level of 90% now we are doing an expansion of let's say another 20000 tons there is no other capacity announcement which has come by in uh, other than china china does keep you know they have lot of graphite companies making non mainly non uhp electrodes so they they are there but uh, in uh, the supply tightness has now started to happen again uh, among the graphite people in the western world okay uh and the format of doing business uh, earlier we had to book needle coke for a slightly longer supply uh and hence we saw also that one year and even in this call you first mentioned that you exhausted the whole price needle coke last call also you mentioned right yeah so now how does this business work we have a more back to back way of pricing needle coke and pricing electro that is a three monthly basis 
and there is a spread always in mind uh, uh, is that the way of doing or we still have to do go the old way no we are now uh, uh, electro people as well as the need go people are working quarter by quarter now if i have a customer asking for a let's say a yearly price i am unable to give a yearly price so uh, i just count what i have in stock what is in the transit what i have booked so i always know our cost so uh, then mm-hmm. we are booking business quarter by quarter and new go is also available quarter by quarter but we always know our cost we know the spread okay uh, can you comment on the spread now uh, what was the running so i know you can it's it's not difficult uh, for uh, you to make some rough back of the envelope calculation okay. so, but i will not um, i mean uh, given a number please because i will no problem that should such be available and then uh, no problem sir but do you think that the spread will be more consistent now unlike last time which went through hey why yes yes because this is, all by, 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 this is what i completely believe that the spread uh, in a, at least in the next two quarters which i can foresee where we have an um, order book also and we know what are the price of maybe go the spread uh, should be consistent but again i'm talking only two three quarters ahead not more than that so you see a uh, upside to this 1000 dollar ebitda which is reported 1000 plus dollar ebitda which is reported in this quarter so no, i i will not uh, see in dollar terms i would rather say the margin which you are seeing are going to be, you will see similar margins in the next uh, uh, two three quarters reason being that all the costs are simultaneously going up it's not only about need go it's about pitches it's about metallurgical go it's about freight fuel everything all the costs are going up and okay. having said that if we say that we are able to have maybe we expect similar margins that means at least we are able to take care of all the incremental costs from all of the materials okay and so this 80000 ton capacity you can use it 80000 uh, higher than 80 or lower than 80 see uh, uh, as i said this 80000 capacity we are once we reach 90 so this 80000 is uh, under certain conditions that we use i mean we make certain product certain size of product it's like an ideal thing it's like a name plate capacity it's like saying a car would have an average of such and such under such and such conditions of course 80000 is the real capacity we have but when we work with all different grades different sizes catering to all kinds of demand usually in a 90 92% and that would you'll probably see with every comp- every graphite company so you say about 90 to 92% of the rated capacity is what you can use is 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 you can stretch it to provided you're taking care of all the variables of the product mix yeah. see i have a product mix it's not ideal to me if 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 i was a, if i would have the right product mix exactly the sizes i want to make and this happens because the globally market also is like that you know if there is a electric arc furnace we are also making some sizes for the little furnace for our years old customers who still want to buy the small size electro from us so it's but once you have a product mix which is ideal of course it is the it uh, it is possible okay so i just clarify got confused here you can operate at 90 to 92% comfortably but even 100% utilization which is generating a 80000 ton output is possible that's how you're putting right it, it, it is possible but it has certain you know fine print to it that i need to be making certain sizes more than the others but if you want to cater to the market your customers your loyal customers who have been with you for 25 30 years i cannot uh, choose to make the sizes i want to because of plant capacity which means you are running at optimal capacity as of now we can say that 90 maybe we stretch it to 92 but that's where you know then then oh, okay. those uh, you know ideal situation comes in perfect thank you very much and all the best sir thank you so much thank you to ask a question ladies and gentlemen please press star 1 we have next question from the line of sonali salgaonkar from jeffries please go ahead so thank you for the opportunity so my first question is regarding china you know last quarter q2 we saw power cuts in china how do you see the entire situation evolving and also impact impacting uh, our 
demand versus pricing in the other global countries see what is happening in uh, china sonali you you guys would know better than us it's all in a state of turmoil now how it impacts hgd we we'll just talk about graphite and hgd now we are not supplying to china all we are worried about all we are keep tracking is what is china's effect to the rest of the world like how much steel are they exporting how much electricity are they exporting or importing that's also that's what we uh, care about you know we not per se we don't have any customers in china as such right sir so i was asking from the indirect impact point of view so for example if the ef uh, production in china starts scaling down due to power cuts how do you see the supply situation evolving in graphite electrodes so right now it is actually otherwise that we are seeing a lot of inquiries coming in from rest of the world for non uhp they are asking for non uhp so that somehow if we talk about electrical power cuts then their graphite industry is impacted more than the electric arc furnace industry because graphite is very power intensive so the, the in fact it is, it is actually working out to be the other way so the power cuts are hurting the graphite industry also other than the electric arc furnace got it sir so second question is regarding the demand how are uh, you witnessing the demand scenario in the rest of the world you know especially uh, in europe or middle east or us and what is the current situation of the inventory are we at near normal inventory right now in uh, uh, sonali i'll answer the second question first we are working at actually record low levels of inventory we do not i mean uh, let me not give a number but yeah it's 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 less than normal i mean we the order book uh, the demand is good we are seeing demand from us from europe from southeast asia virtually everywhere globally steel industry is doing well and you you can see the margins uh, for steel industry in india as well as globally got it so our inventory levels are pretty tight got it got it so my third question is on the pricing i understand you do not disclose the absolute pricing but would you be able to articulate the quantum of price increase that we had in q2 and how much do you foresee in the coming quarters just an approximate estimate would also be sir yeah that is that that is uh, that i can do uh, let's say q2 versus q1 let's say i'm just giving ballpark figures we are talking in terms of 20% price increase q2 over q1 going forward we are able to see 8 to 10% price increases quarter by quarter okay correct sir so 8 to 10% in q3 over q2 is that right yeah yes in q4 over q3 got it sir got it uh so and my next question is regarding the capacity utilization you did mention 90% utilization this quarter yeah. uh so how much was it uh, last year same quarter and what what is it currently even currently we are at 90 plus as we speak in november yes yes we are uh, consistently at 90% right from the last quarter of last year so since then we have been uh, at 90% uh, level and for the next q3 and q4 also we expect to be at 90% Got it. And how much was the utilization same quarter last year? Same quarter last year was seventy percent. Seventy, yeah, seventy-four. Yeah, about seventy percent. Seventy percent for the last year. Got it, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. To ask a question, participants may press star and one on your touchdown phone now. We have next question from the line of. Vidal Gandhi from 91. Please go ahead. Um, hi, I've got um, three questions. Um, the first is about coal. Um, so I had read that um, in October, um, many power plants in India had less than eight days of supply. Um, what would be the impact on your production if um, there are uh, when there is load shedding? and do you have anything in place to mitigate the risks around that okay so let me answer this for you uh, see there was a lot of news 
everywhere that India is working with, like four days of stock, three days of stock. But later, I mean, it was we didn't see the impact anywhere. I mean, there were no load shedding, etc. And I think Coal India has done a wonderful job by ramping up production. Uh, that is why I think the government prevailed upon Coal India to push their own domestic supplies. So so far as we talk, we didn't see any kind of uh, load shedding, not to the industry, not to residential. So and I mean. Uh, that, that that's about it. And uh, the way it has been proceeding since the last one month, the shrill of this coal shortage has gone down, and uh, industry is working normally. Do you get your all all your power from the grid, or do you have your own captive power plants? We have captive power plants, which are also coal based, but we're not running them now for the past one year. Uh, we are using all our power. We have, been, um, we have a 70 megawatt connection, and we are taking all the power from the grid, from the state electricity board, like we say it in India. Okay. Thank you. All right. And the second question was: I, I saw that the uh, spot price for electrodes in China fell from May this year to the end of September, and then rose sharply. Um, from that point on. Do you have any um, thoughts on what caused that movement? Sorry, I didn't get the last few words you said. I, I heard about China, that prices shooting up after September 20. Yeah. What is you wanted to ask? What caused it? The, what, what caused the fall from May to September? So there was, there was a, um, a fall in the spot price from May to around September. And then September it shot up very sharply back to the previous highs. I mean, it was quite an interesting dynamic. And I'm just, I would, if you have any clues as to what caused that, that would be helpful. I mean, really the way uh, Chinese have been working is demand and supply is very short term. There's, you see more spikes uh, from their side. So, I mean, I really don't know why they had to go down to those crazy price levels in the twenties, and also I would you can relate it to the steel industry uh, uh, capacity utilization and steel demand also. From October twenty, you are seeing a consistently, you know, rising production of steel companies and improving EBITDAs. So that is the time that April, the period you are mentioning of April to September twenty, even steel industry was not doing as good. Steel industry started to pick up only after October twenty. Okay. Great, thank you. And and the, the last question I had was um I had read about the use of graphite electrodes in electric vehicle batteries. Um there is a Chinese company, Putelai, that that uh, produces this product. Um to what extent can um production of electrodes for electric arc furnaces be converted to um electric vehicle battery or are they entirely separate markets? Uh, these are uh, separate markets, separate products. The so graphite electrode, the primary use of that is in steel melting. So the generic is graphite. So what lithium battery they're using is is an anode. In a cell, there is an anode. An anode is nothing but a graphite powder. Yes, it is graphite, but it is processed differently. An anode can be made from two, three, four precursors like a natural mine graphite, like a pitch coke. And so these are two, uh, sometimes people do mix the two things that probably is the same thing, but it is actually not the same thing. But yes, generic is graphite, but that anode, that process is very different. That product is very different from the graphite liquid which are used by steam companies. Got it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. To ask a question, participants may press star and one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the lineup Manish Sontalia from Motilal Oswal Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Two questions. What is the situation of our Iranian exports? Uh, and second is, if domestic production in China of steel is coming down, what are they doing with the uh, graphite electrode capacity currently? Are they dumping it worldwide or how is the situation out there? 
See, China, the main production, as you know, 88% is from the blast furnace side. And only 12% is from the electric arc furnace side. So when they're coming down, actually, it's both the blast furnace, the side is impacted more than the electric arc furnace. Now, what they're doing with their electrodes, I would say, right now, the way power cuts are going on, even their graphite electrode production is impacted. Yeah. About your first question, the Iran thing, no, we are not exporting a thing, um, anything to Iran due to ongoing sanctions from the U.S. side. It was it used to be a very good market for us, but uh, for the last two, two or rather three years, more than three years, there have been absolutely no nil supplies to Iran. But maybe if sanctions are lifted, we will might resume. Okay. Just a follow-up on the uh, graphite uh, uh, capacity in China. So with uh, power cuts, etc., uh, are you seeing really Chinese export of electrodes increasing over the last quarter or two? No, rather, uh, no, not at all. Rather, I think I have a feeling from the market that their exports are actually coming down since the last quarter, the export of graphite electrodes. But maybe when the data emerges from China, we will have a look at it. But right now, the 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 feel I have from the market because I'm in touch with customers on a daily basis. So it seems to me that more inquiries are coming to our side for the sizes which were earlier supplied, for the non-USP grade, which was earlier supplied by Chinese. So customers are now preferring more of uh, USP as opposed to HP. Uh, no, I didn't say that. It's not about USP as a non-USP. See, we also have a certain, in our product mix, we also make about 30% non-USP. Okay. So the customers, our customers are aware that HEG also makes some non-USP products. So okay. even they're not getting supply from China, they turn to HEG to ask if we have some availability. That's how I get a sense that let's say X, Y, or Z customer who was not checking with us for the non-USP, suddenly they start checking with us or sending inquiries, gives us an indication that probably they're unable to source it from China. Okay. And uh, just additional question, what is the price difference uh, between, let's say, an HP and a USP for similar dia? I mean, just about, uh, not absolute varies, numbers, but just what is the actually, difference? Actually, it is a, uh, it varies year after year, quarter by quarter, because both have different costs in the sense here we have to use only needle coke, and for the non-USP, we use Indian uh, regular coke. So it depends upon their pricing, and mostly... Non-US UHP is pricing is driven by the uh, EF demand in the world and what our what our graphite industry is doing. Non-USP is mainly pricing is mainly driven by how much supplies are coming out of China and their pricing. So accordingly, we have to price our products. Mm. So if you ask me, Chigli, what is the difference between the two? Mm. Then you know it's it's it is very. I just wanted the difference say, in prices for similar uh, diameter, so it can give some idea about the demand supply situation, uh, basically on the China side. If the if the gap has increased significantly, or is it compressed, or is it stable? Uh, I mean, it's it varies from which point in time. If okay, if if, if I have to answer this. Uh, let's say if I had to answer this today, what is the difference between USB and non-USB? I would say anywhere between fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars, okay, something like that. But because they're two different products, actually, that that they are irreplaceable. I mean, you cannot use the non-USB in place of a USB. No, I was just uh, referring to the last cycle when we saw very uh, steep uh, J curve in graphite electro prices. At that point in time, the UHP and the non the demand was so strong, the UHP and the non UHP prices converged literally, literally converged. Literally converged, correct. And so right now, that gap is uh, standing at two thousand dollars. Is no, I mean, it's again, which point in time? Three months later, you ask this question, I'll give a different. Uh, no, at this given point in time, currently, currently as we speak. Mm, okay, if you are being so specific, then let me let me uh, let me hazard a 
more uh, accurate uh, guess for you. Yeah, thousand, I would say thousand, thousand, five hundred dollars, not fifteen hundred to two thousand, thousand to thousand five hundred dollars. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A reminder to participants, if you wish to ask a question at this time, please press star and one on your touchstone phone now. We have next question from the line of Ravikant Aruna, an investor. Please go ahead. Hey, hi, uh, I'm Ravikant Sikhi and I'm a retail investor. So I fairly got less knowledge in this area, but I did my research a little bit. So out of the points that you spoke, sir, what I would like to know is, you said there are crops in China that the production, the power cuts or whatever, the, the production of graphite and fruits, and also the steel making has reduced. And uh, then there is, we all know that China is, a big, is one of the largest producer of, of, of the graphite electrodes, right? So will that reduction in supply cause any imbalance or increase in demand in the rest of the world, which could mean to say the, the other uh, regions like Europe, US, and uh, the other Asian countries, this could propel the demand for the graphite electrodes. See what the, we are seeing. I was mentioning we are seeing inquiries coming in for non-USB mm -hmm. electrodes also. USB, of course, they mm -hmm. are coming, but non-USB mm -hmm. also from places like Europe. Europe has recently uh, announced an anti-dumping duty against Chinese. That's one reason. But right. even in other parts of the world, uh, we are seeing uh, more inquiries coming for non-USB also. Uh, those customers were probably taking from Chinese earlier. Okay. I think that answers my questions. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To ask a question, participants will press star and one on their touchdown phone. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That was the last question. I'd now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Gulati for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, friends, uh, for attending this conference call. And uh, uh, we hope that the, and the times to come will be better than this and the demand for steel and electrodes will continue to grow. We look forward to meeting you in our next conference call. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of SKP Securities Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining with us, and you will now disconnect your lines.